good evening to all the viewers who are watching live and will be watching on the recorded version this is me your medico orko mukherjee with you guys and currently we are facing some issues with it again as lot of our it team members are having exams for which we are currently being sorted out with this problem so please pardon with us and this it problem will go on till 22nd march so please bear with us and we have an interesting topic today so without wasting any more time let's just jump on to the 30 seconds countdown time Good evening, sir. Good evening. Very good evening. Sir, long gap, and that also we had skipped one uh, CME due to some technical issues. Uh, uh, good evening, all our viewers across the globe. We are now uh, live on our eighty-eighth CME online. We started long back, and slowly creeping towards the century. With your permission, sir, uh, let us call on our inaugurator tonight. Yes, please call. Thank you, sir. Uh, let us welcome uh, Dr. Rupak uh, Biswas uh, to inaugurate our CME of uh, tonight, 88 CME. Over to you, Dr. Rupak Biswas. good evening everybody my regards to our respected sir dr dev narayan kallani president of nih alumni association and dr vidyut mukherjee secretary of nih alumni association myself dr rupak bishwas alumni and ex employee in yoga and physiotherapy unit of nih from 2003 to 2013 i am very much glad to get the opportunity to be the inaugurator for today's 88th online cme session today's topic is the eastern roots of homeopathy and its amalgamation with the eastern medical science this is a very interesting topic and we will be enriched with the valuable information regarding that topic we are proud to have dr ranjani bansal as a moderator she is a very good homeopathic physician practicing for 20 years yoga meditation and nutrition expert and also a very good hand writing analyst today we have a very eminent speaker dr velu narayanan bhms md acupuncture MSc Yoga in Human Excellence Siddha Jogi life trainer stage artist and Indian <clears throat> martial arts trainer Dr Velu Narayanan is my beloved junior and very well known to me his loud and sweet voice will make the session more pleasant i am handing over the mic to dr ranjani bansal hello good evening everyone i hope i am audible 
uh, first of all, thank you, Vidita. Thank you, Kalyani sir. Thank you, Rupakta. I'm Dr. Rajni Bansal. Alumni of National Institute of Homeopathy. And now straight away coming to the topic. Today's topic presented by my very own classmate. We both are from 7th batch of NIH, Mr. Velu Narayanan. The topic that he's going to present is the Eastern Roots of Homeopathy and its amalgamation with Eastern Medical Science. A very interesting topic. Now, when I was asked to moderate, I was myself questioning what was this Eastern Medicine. So yeah, so Eastern Medicine is also known as Oriental Medicine or uh, the Chinese Medicine, one of the oldest systems in the world. And uh, <clears throat> it's been practiced over 2000 years. Even our in, uh, Ayurvedic practicing is age old. So if we have an approach as in homeopathy, we have been knowing and we're doing holistic approach, mind, body, spirit. So here, the Eastern medicine, the very concept is the holistic approach. They also talk, we talk about vital force. Here they talk about, it is known as chi, which represents the vital life energy that flows through the body. They talk about meridians. We talk of chakras, the nadis. So balancing and harmonizing the chi is the essential requirement of overall well-being of a human being. Then we also talk about the yin and yang energy, that is the feminine and masculine energy. We call it a shiv or shakti or the prakriti or the purush. This imbalance causes disruption of the energy and the disruption of the energy leads to various ailments. So, there are various treatment modalities available in this, which includes acupuncture, Reiki, pranic healing, Tai Chi, Qigong, yoga. So now let me not take some, any more time and let me call upon my friend, Dr. Velu Narayanan to throw over my Thank you. Uh, give us uh, the insight as to how that uh, homeopathy has a root into this and the similarities and how you have uh, come up with this idea and to present this to us to uh, so that enlighten us with this. Thank you, uh, Velu, and uh, over to you. First of all, I say my thanks to my beloved seniors, Dr. Bidyudha, and Rupakda and my beloved uh, lecturer Kalyani sir and uh, I say thanks to my classmate Dr. Ranjini uh, for this uh, opening. This is a very grand opening I can say because you have uh, almost exposed the hints of the topics in this discussion. So to start with I'm opening up a new episode in the homeopathic way, that is the Eastern roots of homeopathy. Then we should know then what is East, then what is, then you should know what is West. So as far as the East is concerned, as far as the healing methods of the East is concerned, we deal with five elements so this is the base what does this word east means the word east means india china tibet southeast asia and japan so this is the east and we are having a very long uh, thought process which can extend up to 
sixty thousand years. I repeat, we have a knowledge system which can be dated back to sixty thousand years because you take the uh, Australoid people from Australia, and uh, genetically related to the south, southern part of India, and if you can see the medicine, what they are using is a way of pranic healing. Marma Sikitsha, they are using. So they are there in that island, New Zealand and Australia for 60,000 years. So before 60,000 years, they were in India. They crossed the sea. So if you move further, it will go back to 1 lakh. So I don't want to um, expand it more. So it is one of the oldest thought systems of the planet. And the thing is that the healing process is comprised of five elements as far as the East is concerned. Now, the problem with the Western ideology and Eastern ideology is that even some homeopaths, they find it difficult to understand the concept of vital force because we are flooded with the Western ideology. Unfortunately, Hippocrates, he postulated four elemental theory. But he got this idea from the East. Most of the Greek philosophers of Athens, they were in touch with the uh, hermits, sages and rishis of India. So they got the theorems and postulations from them. They got the ideologies from them. And Hippocrates, he got the ideology, but it, it was missing the basic element. That is the first element which is also called as a Matru Buddha. In Sanskrit and in Tamil, they are called as Pancha Buddha. Pancha Buddha. Pancha means five, the five elements. The first element is Akash. And in other words, we can say in the Western language, Ether. But it is nothing but magnetism. It is the cosmic magnetism. The cosmic magnetism is the first element followed by the next element that is the moving element that is the air. Then when it gets intensified, it becomes light, the gaseous light. And when it is, when it is intensified, it becomes liquid. And when in it, it gets intensified, it becomes solid. There is a faulty perception that the five elements are ether, air, water, land, and so on. So it is not like that. First, there is void or magnetism, universal magnetism. From that comes the air, or you can call it as gas, any gas in any form. When it is intensified, it becomes light. You can see in, uh, I'll tell you, you can see in LPG gas. When the gas intensifies, it becomes liquid. You see in LPG, liquid petroleum gas, it is more in a dense form, it is in liquid. When you release it, it comes as fire, then it becomes gas. So from gas to light energy, that is the fire, then it becomes a liquid form. And when liquid form intensifies, it gets into a solid form. You see the molten lava. You see the molten lava from the deeper earth. It is in liquid form. It comes out, solidifies as a rock. So whatever material you take it in the universe, they come under these five elements. These five elements were named by the Siddhas, the immortals of the East as na ma chi va ya the five elements were, were called as nama shiva ya so nama shiva means the five elements we deal with the five elements we heal with the five elements and from this think tank from this area all the other countries they took their knowledge our first brothers were chinese people so we are brothers and we share equal knowledge and culture system. 
the most pity thing with india is that we have lost contact with our eastern brotherhood we have lost contact with their ideology we have lost contact with the methods of healing now we are clinging to the west to prove ourselves we are clinging in a pathetic manner to prove ourselves in spite our eastern counterparts are doing miracles like they have developed the knowledge system like acupuncture acu healing acu pressure so in philippines or in southeast asia in china in tibet in japan they have developed their their own system of healing they advanced in level so what i want to say is that we are based in five elements but hippocrates he took only four elements so when you take the four elements then you can never understand what is the bio energy or the biomagnetism because that is the first element you can never understand that this is the problem with the western science because they have no first element but what we are doing we are targeting the first element through the other four elements for example we are treating the mind which is the first element through the means of other four elements because we know very well the mind is the base so the first problem with uh, mal adjustment or misunderstanding between the east and west is that the number of the elements we have five with the base element of akash that is the bio energy or bio magnetism which is everywhere if it is in me it is called as life force or vital force if it is in the society is it is called as the social energy and if it is speak as general then it is the cosmic energy or prana i am using the word prana now for the first time prana is everywhere and everything you take e is equal to mc square nothing is solid here nothing is solid here everything is energy but energy seems to be solid energy seems to be solid we were blind when uh, that our uh, jewish counterpart the one who is breaking the uh, spoons with his own eye just by the power of the eye yuri keller he is bending the spoons we are blindfolded to see that we don't hear we don't show any interest in that because we are dumped with western ideology that seeing is believing but as far as india is concerned we believe in what we feel not by seeing because our energy system our knowledge system is deep rooted in biomagnetism in cosmic magnetism and let us speak about vital force as far as the vital force is concerned there are many misunderstandings even with my own friends when we are uh, hostless in calcutta and uh, there was uh, serious discussions have you seen that then what is vital force uh, these things appear because we are dumped with western concept but when you go to a chinese tai chi practitioner or a person who is meditating or to a yogi he will laugh at you because these yogis can meditate without breathing without external breathing there is no need for lungs for breathing because you are not breathing air you are taking the prana inside if you are enough to eat prana then the skin is enough your skin is enough to breathe that is what the yogis are doing in india and the yogi rama was tested for that also all his systems internal systems was arrested but still he is living because he is taking in through his skin the prana the chi the vasi the prana is taken through the skin even in pondicherry 
uh, there was a mother, you know, Pondicherry mother, who was uh, um, the immediate disciple of Sri Aurobindo. What she will do? She will take a um, orange. She will just keep it in her navel chakra, that is in the navel region. She will lie down. In just 15 minutes, that orange will be shrink like anything. She will suck the essence without eating it. This is yoga. When you know how to manipulate the base energy, the first energy, the Matru Buddha, then that is the real science. As far as India is concerned, you are having the real science. So that energy is called as prana. Dr. Ranjini, any questions till now? Oh no, uh, please go ahead. Uh, like uh, I don't want to interrupt between because it is very interesting to listen to you. So just go ahead with it. I think uh, okay. you have very well explained about the Panchabhutas and so how uh, and please do keep correlating with the homeopathic aspect also. Yes. Now. As far as homeopathy is concerned, Dr. Hanneman was a translator. So there is every chance of coming across the testaments, the literature of the Siddhas and Rishis as far as the Ayurvedic texts are concerned. So he might have, I'm not telling he has, but he might have come across their writings and uh, he might have tested on that because why I am stressing this because there are two vital points in homeopathy. One is the vital force which is discussing with prana and another is that the three miasms because um, I was fascinated to see the three miasms are nothing but the three doshas which is discussed by the sages and rishis and munis of India. The three doshas are named as the three miasms. The three miasms are nothing but the three doshas. Three doshas means the root cause of the sufferings. When the air element predominates, then it is vata. That is, in our language, it is psychosis. When the fire element, the itch, predominates, then it is pitta. When the earth and it is mixed with water, it predominates, there is stagnation and it is kapha. Not only that, all the mind symptoms, I repeat, all the mind symptoms of the three miasms, they are almost a replica of the three miasms and they, they are almost a replica of the, the three doshas. <coughs> so I was first surprised and then I studied and even I will tell one thing as far as the Pitta is concerned sulfur is the topmost medicine of the sages and Siddhas and Munis it is called as Gandhak, Gandhaka the sulfur is the topmost medicine for Pitta you see now in homeopathy sulfur is the topmost medicine for Sora and now, as far as Kapha is concerned, in our language, it is syphilis. Rasa is the topmost medicine. In our language, mercury. As far as the Siddhas and Rishis are concerned, there is no medicine, no topmost medicine can be made without the help of sulfur and mercury. Sulfur is a Shakti component and mercury is a Shiva component. All the medicines, very rich medicines, grand medicines, uh, the medicines which act unconditionally has to be made from either sulfur or mercury or combination of both. They were called as Rasa Gandhi components. And now it is the same thing. We call them as the king of antisoric remedy. We call them as king of antisyphilitic remedy. Then what about Tuja? You will be surprised. It is more interesting because now the salt arises, the salt. 
as far as salt is concerned the biochemical salts are concerned tuja is more concerned with the biochemical salts because all the plants they are basically minerals they have some minerals these minerals were taken as biochemical salts by the siddhas and munis even in south you have navabashana in south there is a murugan idol which is made by siddha bhogna before 5000 years he combined nine great uh, poisons and he made it into an idol and uh, when you do abhishega for the idol a very small very small minute nano particles will be taken along with that and they will use that in that abhishega tirtha or panjamrata it will be mixed that and it will cure almost every disease it is there still it is called as nava pashana so we were well advised and telling our our forefathers our forefathers were well advanced in this technology they were well versed with manipulating the five elements they are well versed with manipulating the prana and hanuman is clearly telling about the vital force which is inhabiting the human body and as far as our forefathers are concerned they are telling that the prana circulates in 72000 channels not only us our brothers chinese people and our elder brothers tibetians we are all nagas why nagas i am telling the word naga naga means serpent we are the serpent worshippers and even you can ask to people of manipur they worship dragon and dragon is nothing but serpent why serpent serpent is the gundalini energy serpent is not serpent it is the gundalini force the same force is called as dragon the same force is called as dragon in china those who worship their own serpent power they are called as nagas this is the naga culture we are the serpentile race and we can proudly say that we are the first to get civilized in this planet we are the elder most civilized people of this planet that is the serpent race the nagas nagas are full of asia not only in india the whole of india china tibet southeast asia up to Austra australia everyone is inhabited by nagas the serpent race so this is our thought pattern our thought system from where we are getting that so they have told that there are 72000 nadis and they know the circulation of prana in them and they know where the prana stagnate and they know where the prana rotate and they have named it accordingly in marma sigicha in tamil nadu we call it as varmam in um, sanskrit it is marma so just by touching the some point healing can be done there is no medicine there just by touching what happens is that they receive the cosmic energy they inject in that marma point that's all work is over because that is the first element that is the mother element what you are touching you are touching the prana dealing with the prana directly all i want to say is that hanuman was given very less period of time because 80 years was not enough for a person like dr samuel hanuman because uh, he was a special angel who was sent to unify the healing systems of east and west but 80 years was not enough for him but he stumbled across he he hit it over upon the tip of the iceberg that is why in his last two aphorisms he is speaking about animal magnetism now as far as the animal magnetism is concerned 
it was termed as mesmer mesmerism because they think that it was founded by mesmer but it was rediscovered by mesmer and uh, of course there was uh, there was some um, uh, misuse also because mesmer was not a sage he was not an immortal he was he was a person who was doing his research he was a researcher so we cannot expect ethical background from him but it was named as mesmerism unfortunately unfortunately the thing which they termed as mesmerism was in practice in the eastern part of the world for more than 60 centuries 60000 years not not even 6000 years more than 60000 years it was there for eons we are well versed with marma sikitsha one of my masters he can just extinguish the fire by seeing the by seeing by just by looking i am not bluffing or i am not trying to uh, do anything tricky he can extinguish the burning fire just by looking this is called as nokkavarma just by seeing you can touch the etheric point and you can stop that and this is what applied by bodhi dharma because as far as the eastern part is concerned because i have to give more stress for the eastern part because we are the salt of the soil we are the soil of india if we don't speak then we cannot speak forever in india martial arts and medicine they go hand in hand because the serpent race the naga race was a martial race they were the first warriors of the world so as far as the naga culture is concerned it was a martial race and indian martial arts can be divided into two parts one is the style of parasurama that is a northern style if you, uh, if you come from the himalayan region up to northern part of india and up to um, maharashtra the style is the style of parasurama and if we come down to south it is agastya muni style the martial arts in martial arts burma is used the enemy can be attacked without touching just by looking he will fall down he will fall down just by looking because just you have to strike the marma point that is enough he will be shaken from his roots and i have seen all those things i have seen i was uh, experiencing these things so what they, they actually do is that they collect the prana they collect the cosmic prana they dump it inside and they project it during the time of war these were called as astras they inject they propel the pranas they will go and strike this is very commonly used in india and china so the thing is nothing but prana the thing is nothing but cosmic magnetism how to trap it how to manipulate it how to use it for healing purposes so we are doing this for a long time all along on the all way all our forefathers they are well versed with that because you say that this india before the time of shiva shiva was a siddha yogi but before the time of shiva there were many shivas anadi shivas they were called as the rishis the rishis came from pleiades constellation then what is pleiades constellation we call it as sapta rishi mandal you see it in the cosmos you can see you can see the sapta rishi constellation they came from there and they gave us the knowledge now the westerners are studying oh uh, the, the, there are certain immortals who came from uh, this uh, saptarishi that is the uh, pleiades constellation but if you take the stories 
of all the older what you say uh, the inhabitants old inhabitants of the world the true inhabitants of every nation if 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 he is a native american from mexico if you go to the astroloid people from australia if you go further down to southern part of india they all say one thing our forefathers they descended from the skies they came in vimanas ufo they came in vimanas they taught us the art of cultivation healing and immortality so this is now in every culture not only in india in every aboriginal culture in every aboriginal culture we have this story if you go to africa they they have the same story that our forefathers they came from the sky if you go to china you say hangdi hangdi says i descended from the heavens my forefathers came from the sky they came in dragons we call them as vimanas so i don't want to extend that further but i will say one thing we are having a different story which has been hidden for a long time now it is time enough is enough we have to speak it out because we have come to a point where there should be an amalgamation of eastern and western science for the betterment of the human race so we cannot sit and keep quiet by see my own grandfather he was a siddha medical practitioner and i cannot sit quiet i cannot sit quiet because hanuman is speaking about prana it is it is it is seen it is visible he is speaking about prana so that is why i am telling that he at last stumbled across the tip of the iceberg that is the prana so he tells in his last two aphorisms about animal magnetism but he knows only animal magnetism because his thought process is like that because he is from the west he is not a sage he is not having forefathers like us he has of course he has worked hard from his from his standpoint of view from from his side as far as dr hanuman is concerned his work is tremendous but he says he gives us a hint he has given that as an experimental medicine because he is giving to us in the hands he has left us in our hands as a experimental medicine see i have found out all these things but it may not be the final you proceed further with your own knowledge your own experience what a brilliant soul was he so it is a next step further it doesn't mean that i will blindfoldedly uh, i will try to manipulate with uh, i will try out with uh, animal magnetism are yaar my forefathers are there they have done that already so why can't i adopt it there, there is marma sikitsa there is pranic healing there is reiki there is yoga why can't why can't i adopt it inside what is the problem for example i will tell you if a person is needing aconite now we can give them aconite at the same time we can be telling them to do some kriyas bandhas to overcome the fear why because homeopathy and yoga both are touching the same thing homeopathy is touching the pranic body yoga is touching the pranic body one is touching here one is touching here both are the same further deep homeopathy is moving into the psychic body that is the mano maya kosha in sanskrit it is called as the mano maya kosha we are 
uh, sheathed in five koshas the physical the pranic the mental the astral and the bliss body so as far as homeopathy is concerned it penetrates the physical it penetrates the um, what to say the vibrational body that is the pranic body and then it penetrates the psychic body the mind body same thing is with the ayurvedic medicine and siddha medicine they can reach up to pranic body and mind body also there are certain medicines there which can act in the mind they use mani mantra and aushada they use some sound mechanisms to manipulate the mind and we are using dilutions to manipulate the mind after all the root cause is the mind after all the root cause is the ether after all the root cause is the akash because that is the mother see this is akash and this is the physical entity this is the physical body no need for dealing with this if i pull this i can pull both so if you pull akash the physical entity will also come with you because the physical entity is nothing but an off off root or an offspring of the akash of the mother element so if you shake that the physical entity will shake so when uh, gurlian photography was discovered in russia they found out the aura which is emitting from the body they even saw the soul getting inside and going outside during death the so called energy mass and they found out that light is manifested in in every, every material living and non living every material emits light and that is not light that is nothing but that bio energy and we are dealing with the bio energy so hanuman stumbled upon the tip of the iceberg and he named it as animal magnetism because he was a westerner uh, we are not uh, comfortable with that word animal magnetism because we are having a very long past we are having grandfathers and grandfathers of rishis and munis for thousands and thousands of years who have named it, named it as prana and there are fortified systemic healing methods of prana here in india so why can't i adopt why can't i select them as a complementary medicine for homeopathy i am selecting it is not an alternative i am selecting them as a complementary for more further fast healing if a person is brooding on the past like natramyu there are many bandhas there are many kriyas there are many uh, breathing and meditation techniques to forget the past very easy so uh, it is not a question from my side i worked uh, for the past 20 years i am very much grateful to my lecturers in nih because they encouraged me they never stopped me when i was uh, in uh, as a uh, in house house surgeonship i started experimenting with some yoga techniques along with the medicine and it worked a lot and it helped me a lot after all we are dealing with mind and uh, there is a word of caution also here as far as adopting the eastern techniques one technique cannot be applied directly with homeopathy that is acupuncture because acupuncture is directly dealing with prana what they say is that we have to alternate acupuncture treatment with homeopathy because we are touching the marma points there whenever you are using marma chikitsa or acupuncture or acupressure then the treatment with homeopathy has to be altered for for example one week homeopathy and next week is uh, to to stimulate or stimulate the process you can go for 
മർമ്മസിക്ഷ ആ പ്രാണിക്കിലെ but as far as yoga is concerned there is no need for such hesitation or alternative alternate healing process you can do it all along with it because it is a lifestyle modulation yoga is a lifestyle modulation you are not touching the um points there you are not touching the vital points there you are not touching the points of vital force there you are not uh, stimulating the vital force directly you are indirectly facilitating the vital force to act properly through yoga so yoga is a very safe complement as far as homeopathy is concerned and uh, i used to advise my patients for example if they come i use uh, i used to take that take case taking and along with that a package of yoga for them if possible marma sikitsa if possible acupressure and according to the case so this is what going on here uh, and uh, this is all about uh, the possibilities of amalgamating because he has left us an experimental system and uh, as, and 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 at at last he has left us with the two last two aphorisms of animal magnetism which we understand it as pranic healing so we are completing we are completing the work left by our grand master dr samuel hanneman by complementing it with the eastern science this is very simple dr ranjani thank you uh, very much uh, dr velu i think there's a question for you ഫ്രംസ്റ്റിംഗ് um if you for example if you take sulfur they have tested it with with the atomic resonance they found out that there was no particle but there was only resonance there so it was uh, practically it has left the area of particle and when it leaves the area of particle it is it becomes tremendous because it has crossed the avogadro number and it is now as an energy form it it, it can be mixed anywhere this like an atom bomb you can spread anywhere this is a very uh, little bit this area is a very sensitive area because since our fellow men are not trained with bioenergy see when the bioenergy is stimulated in our body all our fingertips you can feel the rotation i think dr ranjani you can follow me all the fingertips you can see the chakras rotating and even the inner part of our palms and you can feel the energy you are, when you are what you are receiving and you can feel the energy what you are giving also and you can feel the chakras rotating in our body chakras means what i am telling in very simplified manner the prana, rotation of the prana that's all the rotation of the prana they are naming it as chakra don't make it a big thing then and there the prana they rotate around the central channel that is a sushumna that is called as chakras so what uh, dr prita was telling me is that what she was asking is that uh, how can i relate dilutions so the same version of dilutions is also used in siddha they name it as pudam pudam means what we are diluting in water they are diluting in fire only the element is different we are diluting the homeopathic medicines in liquid they are diluting the siddha medicines in fire they take up any one element they dilute it and they make it in the form of that element when you dilute homeopathic medicine more and more in a subtle form it takes the form of that element in which it is diluted 
when you are diluting it in water or liquid in alcohol it takes the form of the liquid so this is a very sensitive thing and uh, um, it is more subtle what i am telling you but let me explain that with more examples if you go to tibet many lamas they will tell you the date in which they will leave their body they will sit in meditation in open space in open space and uh, when time comes they will close their eyes they will keep quiet and all their fellow lamas they will keep quiet they will pray for him and very silently and quietly he will quit his body uh, quitting the body doesn't mean that he is quitting the leaving the body he will sit there comfortably in the central point forever then what will happen is a mind blowing thing because if you can you can go and you can check the um, tibetan lamas you can go and uh, check in uh, zogchen ideology what will happen is that first their body will shrink slowly the body will shrink for some it may take months together for some it may be for one week they will cover the body because no no one should see that that uh, what what is what process is happening there it will shrink it will shrink and at one stage it will take a spherical form it will disintegrate and at one stage it will disappear i say you it will disappear but it is not disappearing it becomes the first element either fully this accomplishment is called as rainbow body of light in which our siddhas rishis and munis were well versed they used to sit inside the samadhis they used to close the samadhis and they used to disintegrate their body into columns and beams of light this is a well versed practice in india now it is they are following it in tibet you can see you can you are having wikipedia you are having videos you can see that how they are entering into rainbow body of light so when physical body can be converted into pure light why not homeopathy why not the siddha siddha medicine because that is nothing but prana they are aligning they are they are they are mixing it with the original source and if you take the eastern science as far as yoga is concerned i think uh, dr ranjani you are well versed with uh, this uh, the autobiography of a yogi by paramahamsa yogananda so why yeah while telling that uh, about uh, uh, by what material the universe is made up of he says please listen carefully to me this is the most important point this universe is made up of mind matter this universe is made up of mind matter this is told by swami paramahamsa yogananda so this is uh, all homeopaths should be should be um, uh, should be very happy to hear this because the universe is made up of mind matter and mind matters when everything is mind here when everything is mind energy then the medicine which deals with the mind should be the supreme medicine do you understand and do you follow when the very existence itself is mind then how can you go apart from that how can you go apart from mind if you take um yoga vasishta it is also called as jnana vasishta rama is disgusted he is very he is very sad and um, vasishta is thinking that uh, i think he is he is a lad now he is now 14 or 15 years maybe he is having some romantic problem so he is asking him my dear child what is your problem why you are sad now and rama is telling just like buddha he is answering i am not comfortable with the human life because it is not permanent it is not permanent so it tell me the nature of human life what is what is it what is what then vasishta narrates yoga vasishta that is a very huge book 
huge volume you cannot read that <laughs> so at last um rama is bit confused and uh, he says guruji please tell me one thing you have speak me volumes and volumes but tell me please what is this world about <laughs> then vasishta smiles my dear son rama this world is nothing but mind the play of mind that's all leave it this is yoga vasishta this is our uh, we are having that in our in our country but we have not read that because why i am telling is that a homeopath should be delighted to hear that everything is mind because we are trying our level best to even to some of our homeopathic brethren brothers to make them understand and accept the superiority of the mind matter the superiority of prana it is difficult for us to make them understand that because they are flooded with western ideology they are striving hard with western ideology they are striving hard to uh, uh, make them satisfied they are uh, striving hard to make the westerners satisfied come on please please accept our therapy what sort of fun is this we are emperors in prana we are emperors in manipulating prana and why we should be like in that mode of asking this is my question and why can't we adopt our forefathers of course they are complimenting our medicine they are not destroying our medicine they are complimenting they are not going to touch our medicine the methodology will will be more shining we are increasing the ways of healing we are uh, uh, increasing the possibility of healing through the complementary medicine of prana this is my point so why i took zogjen because zogjen in tibet came from india that is in buddhist tantra it came from india a guru called as padma sambhava from southern part of india in 7th century he spread that in zogjen and it named it as zogjen <coughs> in india it is called as gnana siddha lineage gnana siddhas the wisdom siddhas everything is clear here everything is settled here everything is already here the problem is that we lack the way we lack the channel we lack the heart to see them that is what i want to say dr anjani thank you very much uh, dr velu that was really enlightening and uh, the <clears throat> the correlation that you gave between the uh, amalgamation of homeopathy with the eastern uh, medicine when i uh, i think you have beautifully uh, given us enough evidences to correlate so uh, thank you thank you sum up uh, this yeah i was also comfortable because you are from the same uh, uh, yogic line so i was comfortable also thank you thank you <laughs> uh, so you told us about the panchabhuta that is the five elements uh, and the the panchakoshas the tridoshas that is about that that's where the understanding of the myasms get clear as a ayurveda has a deep root uh, you know whenever we talk about ayurveda we always talk about vata pitta kapha and it's a clear indication of we as homeopaths everyone knows that we deal with myasms and myasms today we have a, a very clear like no explanation you gave about sora sacris and psychosis you talked about uh, the koshas that the layers that and uh, when uh, today i just got a i don't know you should hear me like got an i like dynamization the question that came about the medicine being so uh, it feels like dr hanuman helped us uh, like you know energy healing so everything is energy like when we are doing a uh, reiki or a pranic healing the cosmic energy we are using as a to heal 
the ultimate goal of all our doctors physicians or healers all of us is to relieve the sufferer in front of us so uh, as hanuman has proved many medicines in his journey whether it is aconite lachesis they were all his uh, fellow uh, doctors that has done like we have gone up to dynamization he has helped us in crystallizing that energy as dilutions and you know to so that it is easier for us to administer to the patients now when every one of us we uh, western west is looking towards east i think it's now high time that we stop imitating and look into within us look at look within our own uh, culture rich heritage and discover our own self instead of later on repenting when the western tells us the same thing because we have been robbed ages and ages and i think it's just time to learn lessons from our mistakes and we should ourselves unlock the treasures which we already have and go deep and further advance with our own knowledge of homeopathy we as homeopaths like we have with all our studies at all with all our practices that we with our knowledge i think we should further advance with the knowledge which we already has four fathers are left for us and go beyond and the ultimate goal is to heal and uh, when i uh, go uh, deep into this journey everything is about universal con- consciousness and oneness so i think we'll come up to a stage where one day we don't have to debate east and west and we'll be only talking about oneness and you know togetherness and there will be a time when we all know that at we are all energies and at the energy level we are all one so that is how i sum up for today and that's it for today and i now hand over to uh, velu if you have to say something and so that no i i was just watching the comments and um, and i think um, most of the public and our friends they enjoyed it <laughs> the discussion yes we did that hello namaskar we did that can't hear you volume uh there is some here please rejoin if possible uh please rejoin because uh, due to some technical issues uh, uh you are being not being audible please rejoin if possible uh ah, okay please rejoin uh until then please continue ma'am and sirs i think uh, dr kanyani sir can डॉक्टर today's speaker excellent speech perunara but i was feeling so long i have your business and i think many of you will be in the same opinion that perunara put us in an ocean of eastern medicine we are floating such a vast vast area and what i was recalling what we learned in the rd life that the more you learn the more you realize how little you know So now we are feeling that there are many things. We have many aspects. Did you? Are you ready now? Anyway, and I am completely same opinion with Dr. Narayan that we are thank you, sir. Wasting. We are wasting our assets of old age. 
cultures, old age therapeutics, old age, many assets of our country, especially in the zone of the world. And all of us are very aware of, as Dr. Narayan was telling, that we are oldest cultured persons of the, this earth. You see, this Veda, Upanishad, they are the oldest literature of the world. Riksam Yoju Atharva, oldest literature. The treatment system first started from east of the world. But unfortunately, once we became dependent on European culture, gradually, gradually, they imposed us to forget all this, our traditional system of treatment. And we have been, we have been imposed to be saturated with Eastern type of treatment. That is why till date, I am in the same opinion that most of our medical researches, including homeopathy, is being patterned, is being set as per European desires. You see, always we call about WHO instruction, this Western system of research, but we are not following the exact pattern of our Eastern development of the medicinal system. And I am very same opinion with Dr. Narun that as we advise the patient to have physiotherapy, as we advise the patient for diet management, as we advise the patient to put heat or cold application, many suggestions we used to give as management. They are definitely and definitely we can advocate this old age accessory system of medicine which has been tested to thousands and thousands of years. Excellent deliberation of speech, excellent relationship between homeopathy and with the Unani and many other systems in the medical world. And the beauty is that the more we adapt our Eastern system of medicine, more we will be cured by cheapest, most comfortable, and lengthiest period of good health, which is less common in Eastern system of medicine, sorry, Western system of medicine. That's why, as I was telling that, as treatments are advocable, so accessory treatments, especially when we are feeling, when we are feeling constraints, the difficult case, obviously we can refer as a referral system or you can advocate the alumni who are expert to some extent, may not be like Dr. Virin Narayan, but to some extent they can advocate that you can continue this yoga, this pranam practice, etc., for quick and excellent improvement of the patients. There is no harm. Hanuman never told us to be limited in homeopathy only, as he referred very nicely that mathematism was imposed. That was not homeopathy. So the basic thing what I understand that the mathematism, this prana and other system of medicine which was told that you develop one thing that is tremendous willpower. The willpower is nothing but arousing of this, this prana or this internal force that helps in different ways by mesmerism, by touching, as we are seeing that even fire can be extinguished. I have heard many things, I have seen many things. You might have heard the name of Dr. Bishira, Bishan Chandra, chief ex first chief minister of West Bengal and the very renowned doctor, allopathy doctor. Whenever he used to go to see a patient, the moment he looked to the patient, patient feels better immediately. There are many, many examples. Many of our teachers told us that this was the beauty of Dr. Bidhan Chandra. Whenever he sees the patient, whatever may be the case, he starts feeling better. What is the treatment? Likewise, we have heard from many sages that once they touch the patient, the patient gets immediately improved without wasting a minute. Many serious diseases have been cured traditionally simply by touch, by vision, by concentration. And many of us have heard that many people, they go to the religious places and pray to the Almighty or Supreme Power. And by the concentration of this desire to get rid of this suffering, people are getting relief of their complaints. They are curing sometimes. So these things are easy and co-related. Definitely there are a thing inside 
which is rather, uh, I should not say part. He himself is a portion of the universal strength which can cure himself, can cure others, and definitely can facilitate any certain type of serious disease treatment. So anyway, today's theme is a very brilliant thing and excellently he has expressed, amalgamated, put a very nice relationship. We are not neglecting any system. We are not telling to stop any type of treatment, but simply supporting to get rid of the complaint, especially for the incurable difficult cases. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, we are thank really you, highly encouraged by seeing you at a long period. Carry on, brother. Uh, many of us will be encouraged. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Blessings, sir. Namaskar. Please just please. Okay. Uh, there is some still some problem with Bidud. He is not audible now. One more thing I want to tell you, as Vidyut is not audible, that we are very fortunate that presently government has taken efforts by creating IS ministry and other creating funds, assisting this immune system of medicines to grow gradually. This was not before. During our time, not only homeopathy, homeopathy, Ayurveda, Unani, all the systems are very much neglected. There was only one ministry, health ministry. And usually they used to neglect this kind of unscientific, and not only neglect, they used to claim there's an unproved, unscientific system of medicine. Nowadays, the system that ideas is changing. Recently, there was one parliament and question by one MP that homeopathy is an unscientific system. Why government is providing funds? So we are sorry to say that those that person he is not supposed to know what is homeopathy, uh, but we can tell them those who are telling that homeopathy is uncertain. Please come to National of Homeopathy, come in the OPD, see and change their ideas. I can remember one health minister in Delhi in your Aragamela. Uh, just last now I am not able to remember. He was an allopathic doctor, Ambu, uh, Ambubani Ramadas. So he is telling in a I used conference <clears throat> in Aragumila that I have heard that many people in the world they are writing articles claiming that homeopathy is an unfair scientific system. So he told, it is my request by our fund, please come in India, come to outpatient departments and inpatient departments of our homeopathy hospital, see and change your ideas. Fund will be given by the government of India. So this was the confidence of an allopathic doctor who, was, who became health minister. So basically, practically, homeopathy is growing, obviously, and immune system is also growing. Gradually, gradually, we are keeping relation and gradually the relation is increasing. Nowadays, many allopathic doctors, they are referring the patients, patients to homeopathy system because every system has got its implications. They are telling that these cases are very difficult. Iatrogenic effects, side effects are very much. We go to homeopathic treatment for medicine. And we refer to other system of medicine in case of emergency, accident. They, are also, they have also started referring. So we can safely refer many cases to Arbets, Yoga, Yunani, Occupancher. For these referring, referral system or referring, minimum knowledge you to have. That Dr. Venunaran has given excellently. A little bit we can acquire knowledge for referring the cases for quick recovery. Not only that, if we refer the cases, if the case gets easily and smoothly cured, credit will come to our hands. That as doctor referred for Ayurved or Yunani or Yoga or this type of treatment, accessible treatment, I got relief quicker than others. So it is no, no question of discouraging, no question of harming of homeopathy. This is assisting homeopathy practice, homeopathy system medicine, by taking the help of others. Homeopathy, not only homeopathy, every system should develop this type of tissue that to get quicker recovery for difficult cases. Anyway, many, many thanks. And again, I am requesting to all the alumni, like Dr. Vinod Narayan, Madam, yes. please come forward with your experience, your knowledge. It is very clear that Vinod has studied tremendously. 
Mm-hmm. Not a struggle of few years only. And I heard that he's, he has started to come in his opening. Many times. He does not know to do. I should pray to Almighty that please go on and come again with further knowledge. <coughs> so anyway, you, is there any question, madam? Uh, is there any more questions? Oh, no, sir. The question has been No, no, not yet. Are you audible now? Am I audible? Yes, sir. The questions have been attended. Any other questions? Yeah, the questions. The questions have been attended. No, no, no. I really enjoyed. No, there are no further questions. And uh, to continue with this uh, type of uh, program, uh, in the coming month, uh, on 10th of March, uh, two of the person present here will be there again on screen. Only the role reversal. We are going to nice. uh, get some new topics, new ideas, and uh, something related to our mind, our body, and our existence. And uh, I am not disclosing the names, but uh, the person okay. who will be involved in the 10th of March, they are laughing, and uh, we are eagerly waiting to uh, listen and learn from them. There are a lot of things which this platform of NIH Alumni Association is uh, bringing up to the fraternity of homeopathy and as well as in the medical science. So in this uh, venture, we are thankful to all our beloved alumnus, alumni across the globe who are coming forward. I'm really thankful to Velu once I got in touch with uh, Velu that uh, we want some uh, topic from you to speak upon. He said, uh, okay, Dada, I'll share the topic and in a very short time. He agreed on it. Okay, Dada. Okay, Dada. Okay. And, and in the coming uh, years also, we'll be, uh, especially in the upcoming CMEs, we want to listen more from you on the different aspects on your own setup. We are looking forward for Dr. Ranjani and we are also looking forward for Dr. Rupak in the coming sessions in 2024 or 25 uh, with uh, all their new ideas. And the uh, government of India had uh, brought up an integrated approach for health. So we uh, willingly or unwillingly, unwillingly are trying to focus on that aspect too. Uh, isn't it, our uh, respected Kalyani, sir? Sure. Definitely. Because every uh, one of us, including government, they want quick, correct, good health. Right, sir. Preservation of health, promotion of health, and curing of cases. So our next uh, CME will be on 10th of March, and we'll be having some exciting topics. i like to thank uh, Dr. Ranjani, Dr. Rupak, and Dr. Velu for their time and uh, uh, sharing your experiences. Uh, please uh, keep yourself updated in the uh, YouTube uh, video. It will be uh, on the YouTube channel of NIH Alumni Association within a short time after this live session is over. And if there are further comments, the viewers can uh, view this uh, session in the coming days. And there will be a lot of comments. I'll request Dr. Velu to take your time sometimes and respond to those comments if any person are having any queries in the, the coming years. Okay, Dr. Okay, Dr. With with our permission. Thank you, sir. Definitely, sure. And with the permission, with the permission of us, sir, uh, Dr. Kalyani, I'll uh, request uh, Orko Mukherjee uh, I'm returning this uh, session to our beloved Orko Mukherjee to tell about his IT team and there is a question. There is a question. There is a question. Actually, Sir Hanuman was much more aware about all this the energy healing and dynamization and spiritual 
correction of all this. This came from Dr. Exactly. Tina Banerjee. It's a comment. Exactly. Yes. A yes. She's also from uh, the same platform of yoga. She's also a yogini. Ah, so exactly. she's happy about the things going on here. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Dr. Thank Dr. you. Not all the viewers. Viewers. We do not know whether many men gone through India this system of medicine or not. Yes. Because what is our people? Right. And uh, today are some new avenues uh, had been explored and the comments will uh, definitely uh, uh, benefit our fraternity as well as a lot of uh, people will ponder on the views. Then I am expecting a lot of comments in very uh, short period of weeks, in short period of time. So Velu is requested to be there uh, once you get time on the YouTube uh, and if there are further questions, queries and things uh, pop up, you just uh, okay. uh, give your befitting reply. Okay. And over to you, Orko. Thank you. Good night to all of you. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Very good night. Good night. Thank you all. Thanks for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the today's CME. And if you have enjoyed, please do make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And do not forget to mention this with your friends. Share it with your friends as soon as I mean, help us to reach the main goal of the subscriber count. And we will bring you up with more other features as soon as we complete the idea. I mean, this thermal thing that exams <laughs> which we call uh, after completing it we will coming back to the focus of the main it aspect so for now uh, until then we will see you on our next cme so good night to you all and it's me or peace out good night